Kitty. Here, Kitty. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to another video from myself and Miss Lily Bird. I actually was out of town this past weekend. I was in Florida celebrating my future sister-in-law Paige's bachelorette party. I think something's wrong with that sentence, but whatever. It was a great time. Um, if you can't tell, I lost my voice a little, but we are back and honestly was not excited to wake up after my first day back and see snow everywhere. It usually doesn't snow this late in the year here. Um, this time last year, we were working on our garden and it was still rainy, but it was also a little bit sunny. So it's kind of an unwelcome surprise. I will say it's still beautiful, um, but I'm ready for spring and summer. Anyways, today I'm going to be sharing all of the food that I am eating and drinking with you after being away on a little vacation. Starting out my day with a soy latte that you just saw me make. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on my breakfast. Before we get into breakfast though, I want to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor, Thrive Market. I love working with Thrive Market. They have all of my pantry staples. I've worked with them for a while, but I also wanted to call out how recyclable their packaging is. Did you know that it's actually packaged in a zero waste facility? Anyways, this month I stocked up on some staples and things that I knew I was going to use for easy meals after a vacation, but I love how Thrive Market has a wide variety of products, regardless of whatever diet you're following, and they always make sure they're really high quality too. Today I used some chocolate protein powder that I got from my Thrive order to make my morning smoothie and it was very delicious. So if you live in the United States and want to check out Thrive Market, all you have to do is go to thrivemarket.com slash Caitlin Shoemaker. The link is in the description below and you'll get 40% off of your first order plus a free gift worth over $50. Pretty cool, right? I spent the morning catching up on emails and doing things that I missed while I was away. You know, the classic out of office on vacation thing. Um, but now it's time for lunch and I'm going to be making myself a pretty quick and easy salad. I already prepped some of my new favorite way to make lunchtime tofu. I actually just showed you how to make this exactly a couple weeks ago um, in my video where I showed you what I ate for lunch for an entire work week. So if you're looking for more lunch inspiration, definitely check that video out. I'll link it below. I didn't get all the details on this today. I just added salt and pepper. So I'm gonna pop this in my air fryer. And then I went ahead and washed some kale. I am going to be making myself a kale salad. I know this looks like a lot, but honestly, after you massage it, I feel like the kale shrinks so much. Oh my gosh, I got my favorite ever olives from Thrive Market, Castelvetrano olives. If you guys haven't tried these, they're just so buttery and amazing. And then going with the olive theme, I'm gonna toast up some olive bread too, and then make a pretty simple like olive oil vinegar dressing, and I found these sprouted seed salad toppers from Thrive Market. I thought it'd be fun to try them. They have a bunch of different flavors, but this one is sea salt and black pepper, so. So here's my massive bowl of kale. I just de-stemmed it and roughly chopped it. And then for my dressing, a tablespoon of olive oil. I like my salads pretty tangy, honestly, so I'm gonna do equal parts of this Thrive Market apple cider vinegar too. Then I'm just gonna add in a little salt because salt makes everything better, including salads. And it also helps tenderize the kale more. See, look how much that shrinks. I kind of forgot that the olives I bought were pitted. So I just cut around um, the pits, but don't worry, no olives are wasted. I uh, ate every last bit off already. Need a little more vinegar. Is this a giant bowl of kale? Yes. 
personally it's something I crave. I realize it's not something that everyone might find appetizing, but every once in a while the craving just strikes and I make myself a giant salad. I wanted to take this opportunity to yet again remind you that diet culture is insidious and you ultimately should have the decision on what you put in your body and have it be unbiased by what society tells you that you need to be and or do. In more simple and conversational terms, I did purposely title this video saying what I eat after vacation, but if you look at my content across the board, you'll see what I eat after vacation is really not different than what I eat on vacation or what I eat when I haven't been on a vacation for a while. I personally am a huge fan of intuitive eating. I talked about it semi-recently in a little diet update, so if you wanna know more about that, I'll link that down below as well. But I feel like society tells us that on a vacation you like let go and eat all these quote unquote unhealthy foods, which one, it can be like that if you want it to be like that, or two, it doesn't have to be like that if that's not what you're craving. Totally up to you. Um, and then you come home and you're supposed to go on like a juice cleanse or like a just eat salad. And I am eating salad, yes, but I'm not eating like a calorie dilute salad. I know that my kale won't keep me full for very long. So I added tofu, I added healthy fats, I added some bread for carbs, and I added a sparkling water because it just makes me feel fancy and it's very satisfying. Again, I say this every time, but I'm not a dietitian. I just kind of want to share or gently remind you that you don't need to go on a diet if you don't want to, you know? Like how you exist in the world is entirely your business and what you choose to put in your body is your business as well. For me, I like to eat fruits and veggies because they make me feel good, but I also like to eat pizza and drink drinks occasionally because it's fun and I enjoy that too. This is actually my second day back from vacation and yesterday may have been a better day to film because I had pizza for lunch and vegan mac and cheese for dinner and like I feel like most people stereotypically would be like, oh my god, it's after vacation I need like salad and a smoothie, which is what I'm eating today, but it's just because it's what my body is craving. It's not because I went on a vacation, you know? I always do like to acknowledge that, yes, I do have some privileges in this too. I mean, one, I have thin privilege. I live in a thin body, um, so I can eat a piece of pizza without people judging me for it as much as someone who might live in a bigger body. If they posted a picture of them enjoying pizza, people might shame them for it because they have some perception that existing in a larger body means that you're less healthy, according to their standards, which may or may not even be true. I also do think I have like the privilege of knowledge, like coming from a background where I did take some basic diet classes or I've had the opportunity and time to educate myself on like basic nutrition principles, whereas some people may not have that or may have grown up eating a standard American diet or a diet that didn't incorporate as many veggies. So it could be harder for you to eat intuitively if what you know is eating a lot of processed food, which is fine in moderation, but if it's not making you feel your best, you may not know to reach for fruit, food, fruits and like veggies. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to shame anyone for like eating a certain way, but I do think there is privilege with money to afford more um, like veggies and stuff and also just access to knowledge too. But I also feel like some people use this as an excuse or a way to like uh, push off intuitive eating. And I think the majority of people watching my channel do have a general knowledge of how to eat a balanced diet. They may need some help from a dietitian or whatever, which speaking of which, I'll link my favorites below. But I do think most people have the knowledge to eat intuitively. They just have some fear that's holding them back, whether it's well, if I gain weight, I won't be as worthy, which is not true. You'll still be worthy and just as beautiful as you are now. And your friends shouldn't care. And if they do care, I don't really think they're your friend. Or they are just like holding on a certain aspect of control, which I can relate to uh, because I definitely went through my own like eating issues when I was younger in terms of control. Wow, it's getting really dark because it started to snow slash rain. Um, I'm going to take this as nature's sign for me to stop rambling and I'm going to eat my salad and get some more work done and I will see you when I'm hungry again. Welcome to dinner. Changed into come for your pants and now I'm going to make 
as Dylan likes to say, a quick whip. We're having an Indian curry tonight, but before I show you that, I'm actually gonna get started roasting my veggies because that's gonna take longer to cook. Definitely not traditional, but it's what we have in the fridge. So I've got some cauliflower and sweet potato. I'm going to chop these up. And just like that, with a little editing magic, it's all ready to go. So I coated this with some avocado oil, salt, and I had a tandoori seasoning in my fridge. So I'm going to pop this in the oven and then make the curry. So for our curry tonight, I got this simmer sauce from Thrive Market. It's actually a coconut korma, um, which is more of a mild curry. Honestly, I don't use simmer sauces too often, so I'm excited to try this one out. But I do have a tip if you're using like any pre-packaged sauce or like a can of soup, if you have the extra time, saute a few aromatics in oil and it really just enhances the flavor of the sauce because while well, I'm sure this tastes delicious, some of the flavor is lost in processing just so it's safer um, and so it's shelf stable. They like partially cook the food, but then some of the aromatic flavors are lost. So I actually have some ginger and garlic here and then I'm also gonna be a little extra extra and add some cumin seeds and some cardamom that I crushed and removed from the pod just to really help the flavors that are already in the sauce pop. And you can make this with like literally any protein, but today I'm using the chickpeas that I got from Thrive Market. Actually, it looks really good, though I'm not gonna lie. I'm not as hungry as I normally am. That salad was actually very, very filling. Uh, Dylan is at jujitsu right now, but the dogs are <laughs> So I think he might be home. The summer sauce is really good, though. I feel like I just look like a floating head, but I'm drinking some water. I actually did have a little bit of dessert, but I didn't film it. It was like a handful of dried mango and a banana. And now I am going to go to bed, I think. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any other video requests or future way to eat in a day video themes or recipes, definitely leave a comment down below. And thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go to thrivemarket.com slash Caitlin Shoemaker to get 40% off of your first order plus a free gift. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm pretty tired. So I'm gonna sign off and go to bed and I hope you're well and hope to virtually see you again soon. Bye.